What up, players? Wallbots to have in this mud. The washes have dried. We are getting started on the armor. And for the armor, we're going to be using corn red and Gehenna's gold, as well as Auric armor gold. And as you can see, we're bringing up the reds and the golds because they are the most prominent thing about any corn warrior. And I think they look pretty good. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. All right, now that the Tower Brick Crimson wash has dried, or all the washes have dried, we're gonna go back over and uh, highlight up some of the metallics. So we're gonna take, um, we're actually gonna move on to the second gold step, which is Gehenna's gold. So um, I've noticed that this is one of those paints that the gold color tends to sink to the bottom and the red reddish tone goes all the way to the top so you really need to shake that baby up before you can get a very good solid gold color I think a brass scorpion is the worst that one just like it separates and it just doesn't doesn't go back the way you want it to So I'd be interested to hear from anybody who's done or who's played the Warhammer online game, the Warhammer Fantasy online game. I thought that was an interesting experiment in a, uh, for a company to do. I think it was all PvP or player versus player. Not sure though, there's no, it's, it's kind of reminds me of like it makes me think of a bunch of guys sitting around saying like, what are we gonna do to beat Warcraft? Let's make a game that's exactly like Warcraft, but there's a, it's all player versus player. There's no story. Um, like there's no like single, you can't just do it single player. You have to do it with other players. I could be totally wrong. I'm just jealous because I have a Mac. Speaking of which, I heard they released SimCity on Mac just recently. I heard that game was also riddled with problems. I'm also going to be going back and forth with Corn Red for this one, uh, just to clean up any mistakes that I make. Yeah, I love games like SimCity. managing and creating a, a world out of nothing. Even stuff like The Sims, I was a huge fan of The Sims for a long time. So I'm gonna try to leave the um, Carabird Crimson shading in the in the recesses, but I'm gonna try to see if I can clean up the lines with this corn red. It really shows up as pretty bright after the caraber crimson shade, so you don't want to do too much with it, and you want to make sure that it's not too thick on your paintbrush. I remember when I was a kid, I used to play SimCity. I think it was on the Super Nintendo. I never had a good PC, like I never really got into PC gaming. Um, but man, I had like all the consoles when I was growing up. I was very fortunate to be a very spoiled kid. And it came from a house where I didn't have, uh, you know, my parents weren't rich and I wasn't very privileged with a lot of stuff, but luckily my mom was very indulgent when it came to video games and stuff. I remember the first time I dragged her into my this comic store, Other Realms, and I remember seeing these, 
few Warhammer figures on the shelf, and I remember thinking, like, that looks so cool. Mom, can I have these little plastic monster men? What is it? I don't know, but it looks awesome. See, you can paint them, and you can get a bunch of your friends together, and you can make them fight each other. Well, if it means you stop playing so much video games. Little did she know. One can play Warhammer and video games. Man, I hope if I ever have kids, we we'll play Warhammer together. Oh, that'd be so awesome. No, it's my luck. It'll be like some, I have some hot daughter that's gonna become a cheerleader. Then I'm gonna have to spend all my time sitting on my porch with a shotgun, scaring off boys who try to keep her out late. So you can see that when you highlight with corn red, it um, and you but you do leave that that shade and that depth in the uh, in the recesses. It gives you a very nice contrast when you take a step back and you look at you look at the model. We're gonna do one more highlight with gold with Auric armor gold. So you might want to get that ready, but. Already, the Gehenna's gold over the Balthazar gold looks really nice. Has a nice pop to it. You do want to be careful when doing things like highlighting over something that you've done a wash on, especially if you're a new painter. Be careful that you don't um, put too much paint on your brush. Because if you put too much paint on your brush, then it has a tendency, especially if you just take it out of the water pot, which I have a bad habit of doing. The water from the from the from the water pot mixes in with the paint and it leads over into the into the nooks and the crannies and ends up making your all your hard work with the shades just kind of moot, you know what I mean? There's a pigeon singing outside my window. Singing sweet songs, melodies pure and true. Take it, Igor. This is my message to you. Ooh, ooh. Very good, Igor. Very good. Does this mean you'll finally consider letting me and Lewis form our own boy band? We'll be really good, you know, like in sync, in the Backstreet Boys, in 98 degrees. Igor, that was a long time ago. Boy bands are not popular anymore. Yes, they all. 
Ain't you never heard of One Direction? Good point. Lewis, are you encouraging this boy band thing? Don't hate the player, Warboss. Hate the game. Nice. So there is our Corn Warrior with nice gold highlighting. We're going to do a little bit more and work, keep working with Corn Red. So as with Gehenna's Gold, so with continuing with Corn Red and Where's that beautiful, bright, shiny Ulrich gold? Here we go. It's another one you gotta shake it up. Just like the old burnished gold, if you don't have any experience working with Ulrich gold, I found that it's super, super thin because it's meant to be used as like a very extreme highlight. So um, I made the mistake when I was first starting out of trying to start a gold color with Ulrich armor, which was at the time called burnished gold. I made a huge mistake. I tried to paint it on first. It was runny, it was streaky. Um, all the girls laughed at me. It was just terrible. I have since learned that you paint the other colors of the other gold colors on first. Then you save Auric armor for your for your last like edging and highlighting. So it just kind of pops off of what you've already done. It's like an Eldar army. By itself, the colors are okay, but they're not going to be effective unless you give them good synergy, pair them up with another color that complements it. What I love about Burnished Gold is it, it reminds me of some of the really cheesy jewelry that a lot of women in Hawaii like to wear, they wear these huge like gold bracelets. And um, with these like Hawaiian writing, Hawaiian names and stuff on the on it. And not knocking anybody who who likes that style. I just I don't find it very cool. But um burnished gold, Auric Armor Gold, they've always reminded me of it. Those kinds of jewelry. I guess because it looks real. Once you paint it on as a highlight to the other gold colors, it does have a very realistic quality to it, which is why it reminds me of real world jewelry. You can tell um, if you ever wonder, are you using too much paint? The answer is, look at the tip of your brush. Is there a big fat blob of paint sitting on it waiting to spread all over your awesome paint job? If so, you are using too much paint. How that art 
the armor just really picks up the light on this on the high collars here. You don't even have to do more than just paint those. Like just the, the parts that reflect the light. And it really really makes them pop. There's all the gold, so now let's just get into the reds. Hey, I want to thank all the new subscribers that have found my channel and have started watching my videos. Um, it's really it's really encouraging every time I wake up in the morning to see all the new email updates from from all of you who join my channel. So cheers if you're not from the States. If you are from the States, thanks. If you are from other parts in the world, substitute what I just said with whatever cultural approximation of thank you you have. I'm trying to space out my, um, my corn red so it doesn't too heavy and can still leave some of that darker red in the shades uh, shadows I mean but corn red just loves to get everywhere I guess one of the things that's good about the the new paints being so so thin is that you can paint it on and it'll uh, it, it won't dry for a while so you can kind of spread it out and feather it around it's a really good good thing There we go. That should just about do it, I think. That's all of it, right? That's all the red spots. Um, so, the red armor is the most distinctive thing about corn warriors, I think. And uh, I've seen non red corn armor, like people who've not wanted to go with the red armor, but I feel like it is so distinctive that um, it's, you know, it's hard to get away from. And it does look cool. I, th I think it does look cool. So, this is gonna be it for this one, just because it's so iconic, the red armor, I wanted to focus all on that and the trim in this video. Stay tuned for the next video when we'll be handling the cape and um, 
the horns, and the weapon. And then we'll be finishing up this video series. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next one.